In a momentary calm, blades are sworn together, vowing to bring about the restoration of peace and order. The year is 190, and the Han Empire falters on the brink of destruction. Brought low by corrupt eunuchs, and strong-armed by the despot Dong Zhuo. The fires of war erupt across a once peaceful realm. In the growing chaos, rebellions rise, and the Emperor's voice is drowned out by the tyrant's roar. The land suffers. Yet though they band together against a common foe, such a fragile alliance cannot hold forever. Chaos forges agents of power. Tao Tao watches dynasties fall and tyrants rise. He has seen power slip into the hands of the undeserving. And through the chaos... Embers rise, stark against the night. The tyrant Dong Zhuo wields the flames of destruction. Luo Yang burns. Chaos ignites as the power of the Unix is crushed. In the pyre, the Han falters. Opportunity glimmers in the darkness. One's weakness is another's strength. Cao Cao observes and prepares. The moment approaches. Order will be restored, no matter the cost. China is in turmoil. The great empire of the Han, stretching back ages beyond counting, is being devoured by corruption. The yellow turbans began raising their banners across the realm. In response, generals loyal to the emperor rose up and put down the rebellion. Yet despite the victory, the chaos only grew. With the corruption at the very heart of the Empire, the loyal generals stormed the Imperial Palace and killed the Ten Eunuchs, the source of China's ills. In the madness, the warlord Dong Zhuo seized the Emperor. With the great warrior Lur Bu at his side, none dared oppose him. In response to Dong Zhuo's brazen display, treason some call it, a coalition of warlords rose up, led by the charismatic Yuran Shao, to save the Han. Faced with united opposition, Dong Zhuo retreated west to his stronghold of Chang'an, raising the old capital Luoyang to the ground as he fled. It is now the year 190 CE, and the coalition has all but collapsed. Warlords on all sides have seen opportunities to build their own fortunes from the chaos. Yellow turban remnants still stalk the lands, seeking the age of the yellow sky, whilst soldiers of fortune feel the change of fate on the wind and strike out on their own. The scales shift, and China hangs in the balance.
The flames have run their course. Luo Yang is nothing but rubble now. It is the work of the tyrant Dong Zhuo, who now wields power unchecked. He absconds with the emperor in tow. He is barbaric, but not altogether unwise. As long as he controls the court, he controls the empire. In peace, I shall be an able subject. In chaos, a crafty hero. What of the coalition, my lord? They have... ...their bite. But perhaps they can be rallied into something resembling their old strength. It seems that I must be the blade of China's justice. There is no other who can. Man's span of life, whether long or short, depends not on heaven alone. A commandery consists of a capital and its surrounding counties. The capital is the center of administration, and the counties make use of the local resources. Pure folly! China's plight demands merciless actions. We have engaged the enemy in battle. Now it is up to you to command your forces and destroy our foes. China is in chaos. Yet through this chaos, I have found opportunity. These people, these bickering people, they well. It makes them easier to order, to control, vanish. A duel is single combat between two generals. Troops will honor the duel and not interfere unless ordered otherwise. You lack the strength to defeat me! Shut up and die! Go 
for the legs! Does battle wear you out? Oh, how witty. How very witty. Destroy them! Double time! Hurry, move! March at the double! It is Victory just as is it yours, be. and the fate of those you have captured in battle must be decided. You may bolster your ranks with the remaining enemy soldiers, or kill them to prevent them returning to fight you again. Seize everything. Towards unity! <laughs> <laughs> 